In this video, I'm going to show you how to evaluate this limit. Okay, so we have the limit of this function, and we want to know what's going to what this function will approach as x is approaching infinity. Okay. Um, so to do this, uh, we're going to use a technique um, called uh, taking the conjugate of the expression. Um, so the first thing you should always do, all right. Uh, when you do it, when you come across a limit, you should always try to do a direct substitution. Okay, um, so let's take a moment to do that. So when you plug in infinity here, okay, um, into each one of these x, okay, um, you're going to get for this part, you're going to get infinity. Um, and that's because everything underneath this radical sign is basically an increasing function, right? X squared is increasing, and so is x. So everything underneath this square root is going to be increasing. Um, likewise, we have um, 2x here. 2x is also an increasing function. So as x approaches infinity, um, 2 times x will also approach infinity. But putting these together, right, we end up getting infinity minus infinity. Um, so basically, this is a, what's called a, one of the forms of the indeterminate uh, values. Um, infinity minus infinity is not equal to zero because infinity is more of a conceptual kind of uh, kind of um, value. Okay, um, and so infinity just means that um, you know we can think of it this way: whatever you, whichever number you think of, the largest number right that you can think of, just add one. Okay? And since infinity could be, you know, it could be one million or even ten million, right? Um, it's you can always you know, the number can always get bigger than that. Um, so conceptually, this is, there, there is no value for this, okay? Um, so in that case, then what we have to do is we need to rewrite this function, okay? So that we're able to evaluate this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm just going to work with this function and then go ahead and take the limit as X approaches infinity. All right, so let's do that here. We have four x squared plus x underneath the square root minus two x. All right, so in order to rewrite this, uh, we're gonna use the idea of the conjugate. Okay? So what is the conjugate? Well, basically, if you have an ex if you have some expression in this form, okay, so in, in this case, you have this minus this, then the conjugate is going to be this plus this one, okay? So by def that's by definition, okay? So we can apply that here. Okay? So we're gonna take this function and multiply it by its conjugate, okay? All right, so we're gonna have square root of four x squared plus x plus two x, okay? Now, since I'm multiplying this by its conjugate, okay? then we must divide by that same expression. Otherwise, we'll be changing the original problem. And think of this as, just think of this as being over one, okay? All right. So again, this expression here that we have in the numerator, right, this is what's called the conjugate of this one, okay? So, the, so basically it's, um, there's a difference in the two signs, okay? Okay, so we have different sign values okay, for, the, uh, for the, that's for the conjugate. If this was plus, then this would be minus. Okay, so they have to be, um, they have to be different, or we can say they have to be opposite sign values. Okay. I think that would be a better uh, description for this. Okay, um, so now, now what we need to do is uh, we need to go ahead and simplify this, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this out, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put brackets around this just to indicate that we're taking this and multiplying with this. Um, so we're going on the bottom here, okay? 
if we're going to have this expression, 4x squared plus x, I can get the square root of that, plus 2x. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the numerator. Okay. We can do the side work here. So if you look closely here, uh, we have basically that you can think of this as a minus b and then times a plus b. Now, if you remember from pre-calculus, right, if you take a minus b times a plus b, that's going to give you a squared minus b squared. So I can write, uh, we can go ahead and write that over here. So what happens here um, is that you're going to get, you're going to get a squared and then you get I and then you get a times b. And then you have minus b times a and then minus b squared. So this, um, this is gonna give us a squared. And then this here, a minus b, well, that's the same thing as this, right? b times a. So that part right here, this is gonna be zero, right? And then we're left with minus b squared. So many of you will recognize that this, right, going from this to this is just the difference of two squares, okay? That's all that is. And basically, we can apply that here okay, when we multiply these out. So this will be like A, right? And this will be B. So when we, when we multiply this, we're going to get 4x squared here, okay? Right? Plus x, okay? So we're taking, so this is A, right? So when we square that, it gets rid of the square root, and we're left with whatever, whatever is underneath that. And then likewise, we're going to have. Uh, we're going to take 2x and then square it, okay? So that's going to give us minus 4x squared. Okay? Now, if you want, you could actually physically multiply these out, uh, which I did notice some of you do, you know, some of you did that, which is fine, okay? All right, so, okay, so now we have this, okay? Um, so now you can see the advantage, right? This is primarily you know, why we use the conjugate is because um, you can see that this, these two, when we multiply them out, it's going to um, reduce. Basically, these two terms will cancel out and that's gonna leave us with an X here. All right, so what we get from there, okay, so we can go ahead and rewrite our limit. Right? At the limit as X approaches infinity of X over the square root of four X squared, plus x plus 2x. All right, now, again, if we do a um, direct substitution in here, we're gonna get um, infinity on the bottom here, and then uh, we're gonna get infinity on top. Um, so we have to be a little careful here. Okay? We have to analyze this another way, okay? And to do this, that's going to require a, um, a technique um, that is discussed in a lot of the um, calculus, the calculus textbooks, um, specifically when they're when they're talking about limits. Okay. Um, so what the rule? So what you do is the rule is that you look at the denominator here. Okay, and you notice that you look for the term with the highest degree, okay? And so looking at here, we notice that we have x squared here, okay? All right, so just again, just looking at the denominator, okay? So what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna take that term, in this case, x squared, and divide each term by x squared, okay? Um, so let's do that. Okay, I'll start in the denominator. So we're gonna have the square root of 4x squared over x squared plus x over x squared plus 2x over x squared. Okay, again, you look at the denominator and identify which is the largest degree, okay? All right, now 
we have to do the same thing with the top, okay? But this is where it gets a little bit tricky is because remember the X square that we're working with is underneath, originally underneath the square root, okay? So in order to, in order to divide the top X value by, by X squared, we need to remove the X squared from the square root, okay? So this is going to give us X over the absolute value of X, okay? Now, if you recall, right, from, from algebra, remember that if you have the square root of x squared, this is always going to be the absolute value of x. In fact, if you, you know, if you go into Desmos, uh, which is a nice graphic, um, if you put in this function, square root of x squared, it's going to give you the absolute value of x, okay? And the reason for that is because we don't know whether x is positive or negative. Or if it's negative, okay, and so um, that's why we put the absolute value here, okay, is so that we can um, we can take the square root, right? Okay, so using that idea, um, right, we get to here, okay, because remember x squared was underneath the square root, and so we're and so it's in the denominator here, okay, so we're going to take that and. Multiple divided, sorry, divided by this x. Okay. All right. Um, so now we can go ahead and simplify this. Okay. Um, so this is going to give us we have x divided by the absolute value x, all divided by. This is going to give us four because the x squares cancel out here. Uh, this is going to give us here one over x and then plus two x over x squared. And actually technically um, I should have the absolute value of x. Again, because I'm removing, I, I have x squared, actually I have one over x squared in the square root. So we need to take that out. Of the square root, so that's going to leave us with one over square of one over the absolute value of x. So technically, um, this is what it should look like. Okay. All right, um, and so I, that's that's the tricky part for doing this, uh, and that's some that's using a fundamental component of this using this idea. Okay. All right, so now um, now we can go ahead and take the limit as x approaches infinity. So then what happens, okay, is that if we look at this part, because X is approaching infinity, right? So eventually it gets past, right? So if you can imagine that if X is, you know, starts out negative and it goes to zero, then it goes to positive, right? Um, so this is always going to be one, okay? Just, you know, you can think of let, let X be 10. Right, so you get 10 divided by the absolute value of 10. Well, obviously that's gonna give us 10 over 10, which is one. Right, the same thing if you let X be 100, 100 over the absolute value of 100, that's still one, okay? Um, so let's go down here, okay? This right here, as X gets larger and larger, okay? So anytime you take a constant and divide by a large number, okay? The overall effect, is that it's going to get closer and closer to zero, okay? So for example, one over a hundred, right? One over a thousand, right? One over 10,000, okay? Each time, each number, it's gonna get closer and closer to zero. So this, right, this part right here is, eventually it's, well, actually it's gonna get um, smaller and smaller, okay? So it's going to zero. And again, here we have X over the absolute value of X. Okay. Um, so just like up here, this part is going to approach one as X, as X gets larger and larger. So now we have our result. Okay. So the limit of this okay, right, is approaching one. This is going to give us the square root of two because you have four underneath the square root here. And then we have uh, plus two here. All right, so this is going to give us one over square root of four plus zero plus two. 
So that's going to leave us with one over, uh, we have square root of four, that's gonna give us two, and it's gonna plus two. We get one fourth here. So that is the um, that is the way you can um, that's the way that's technically how you would get the addition. Okay. Um, and so remember what this means geometrically, right? If you're to plot this function, um, this would tell you that this function has a horizontal asymptote, and that would be written this way. So it would be a horizontal asymptote. Or if you have y equals to one four. Remember, horizontal asymptotes, they are uh, basically horizontal lines, right? But it's still for zero. So it's, so it's always y equals to whatever uh, the constant you got. But anyway, this is um, this is the answer here for this uh, for this term. Okay. So again. You always do a direct substitution. That's the very first thing you do, all right? Uh, okay. In this case, we don't get a value. We get some, we get an indeterminate value, okay? Um, there's many of these forms, actually. Um, if you plan on taking Calc 2, uh, you will learn all the, you know, the, the, you'll learn about the other forms. Um, and then there's some other properties tied, with, tied in with those. Um, and then, so here, what we have to do is use what we did was use the um, conjugate. Okay, okay. use the conjugate. So that means these have opposite signs. Um, that way, we can rewrite our expression um, in a different form, but it's still equivalent to the original function. Um, then we take the limit of this, all right, which then we have to analyze very carefully here, and we did that by looking in the denominator, see where which is the largest. Um, Look for the largest degree, that is in this case, x squared has two, right? And so we take x squared and divide by each term by that. And keeping in mind this idea, okay, this principle here, that when you take the square root of x squared, it's always equal to the absolute value of x. Okay? So we get absolute value of x here. Um, we're gonna get x squared here because we're still underneath the square root. And then here we get two x over absolute value of x. And then from there, we can go ahead and evaluate this limit. This went to one, this goes to zero, uh, this goes to two, because this gets to two. And we left with one fourth. That's a kind of recap of what we just went through. Um, very, very interesting problem. Okay? And this technique that, I that we went through here, um, this is a more, this is a technique that works for you know, anytime you have a frac, like a fractional, uh, if you have a fractional, um, a fractional function, okay. It also works for, obviously it also works for rational functions as well. Okay. So this is the more general technique. Uh, something in math um, that I always tell my other, you know, I always tell my students that as you move, you know, as you move along in math, okay, um, you're developing more and more sophisticated techniques that can handle a wider range of problems. Uh, because a lot of times in algebra or in pre-calculus, the techniques you learn can only be used for certain cases, okay? Um, you know, so the problems get more, more complicated. So those techniques that you learn in pre-calculus may not always work. Um, and so then you, you know, obviously then you have to develop different techniques to handle those cases. Um, so yeah, so math is like, again, it's, you know, as you get, as you're moving along, um, you're getting more and more sophisticated, right? Um, and so therefore you're getting, um, you're developing techniques for those situations. Okay, so it's a never ending cycle actually. Okay? Um, and everything you're learning in this class um, is gonna be used obviously later, uh, later down the road. Um, and then it's also gonna be used in uh, Calc 2 and Calc 3 and beyond. Uh, so that's why we always keep in mind math is a cumulative subject. I always stress this to my pre calculus students. Okay, because what are they learning there? Uh, they're going to be applying it in, in calculus. But anyway, um, so I, I think I'll go ahead and stop here. Um, and uh, if you have any other requests, um, if you want me to go through a certain problem, I know I've been meeting with some of you through Zoom, through individual appointments. So. You know, some of you, you know, 
you know, time is that it's difficult to meet. So, but if there's any problem, or if, you know, if there's a particular problem that you want me to go through, just let me know. I'll go ahead and stop here, and uh, I'll just until see you next time.